Welcome to our Conversation Corner. I'm Ben Ahrens, co-founder of Reorigin, where we teach you how to reclaim your health by retraining your brain. I'm here with our head coach, Katie, and in this video, we are going to talk about something that's super important and not so intuitive for most of us to practice if we're especially recovering from a chronic condition, and that is how to go about setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. So Katie, as our head coach, has a lot of experience in coaching people <laughs> through this process, and. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you to Thanks. kick this one off. Yeah. Uh, for the record, I also have a lot of experience setting <laughs> setting <laughs> boundaries. Um, I went through a lot in my own healing journey, and um, boundaries was one of the most important things I had to establish in order to continue to move forward in my healing journey. So we have found that it is such a valuable tool for a lot of our members. Um, a lot of our members that have come into the Reorigin program would would be self-proclaimed maybe um, type A's or people pleasers, you know, really high achievers, really go, go, go. And oftentimes when we can do it, we will do it. And sometimes you can do something and you don't necessarily have to do it. And I think that's really important for people yeah. to, to recognize. Just because you have the time, just because you have the energy doesn't mean you need to say yes to something. So I'm speaking from uh, my own experience here, definitely. Um, and I think really the, there's a couple of things that uh, come to mind for me when we talk about setting boundaries. And really the first thing is recognizing that we can set boundaries until we're blue in the face, but it's really the, the honoring of those boundaries that's most important, right? Uh, so we talk about something called the say-do ratio in the program. It's when you say you're going to do something and you follow through on it, you build trust with yourself. You build confidence in yourself. And the more you trust yourself and the more you uh, feel confident in yourself and your decisions, the easier it is not only to uphold other boundaries, but also the safer your subconscious mind, your limbic system feels with you. Uh, it feels like you consciously have its back and you know what's best and you're, you're going for it. So um, we have to make sure that when we set a boundary, uh, whether it be with ourselves, right? I'm gonna read for 10 minutes every day, something like that. Or we set a boundary with someone else that we, we follow through on that boundary. Um, that can be a challenge, especially for people who uh, have been people pleasers. So I always recommend start very, very small. Mm -hmm. um, we also talk about the science of small wins uh, in the program. And so when we start really with really, really small commitments and we set them for ourselves, um, something as small as I'm going to brush my teeth in the morning. And then when we follow through on it, celebrating ourselves, getting really yeah. excited about the fact that we did it. Even if we've done it for the past 365 days, still celebrate the fact that you did it and really boost that say-do ratio. Yeah, there's something really empowering about doing it consciously, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, yes. even if it's brushing your teeth, yes. you might've done it your whole life, <laughs> but putting it in your mind that I'm going to yeah. do this and then doing it and then rewarding yourself for following through with your intention, mm -hmm. like you're saying with this science of small wins, has really actually been shown scientifically to be the process that builds confidence. Yeah. So I once asked someone, you know, how do we build confidence? A friend of mine who's, who's a behavioral psychologist, and he said, we build confidence by setting small goals and accomplishing them. Mm -hmm. And conversely, we've all experienced the opposite, right? Yeah. Where we set really large goals. And <laughs> as we're filming this at this time, we're approaching New Year's and New Year's resolution as we get toward the end of the year. And mm -hmm. so we're all familiar with, you know, setting really big lofty ambitions, and that's totally fine to have good goals and visions, but if we don't have a clear yeah. process for taking steps, and taking small steps, achievable steps, then we can sometimes wind up feeling less confident if we fail to, to hit those bigger marks. So I love that you brought up yeah. that boundary setting really is about starting very small, yeah. and it can come in the form of like, I'm gonna read for 10 minutes, yeah. and I'm gonna protect that time. Yep. and in the reorigin program also, we talk about setting what are called lower limits for ourselves and also setting mm -hmm. upper bound limits. And that's something that we don't often really think about. So if you wanna, let's say, develop a habit just to keep going with this yeah. uh, example yeah. of, of reading, maybe what we would do is we would say, okay, I'm gonna read for you know a minimum of 10 minutes, 
But what we might also want to think about doing in, when it comes to boundary setting is say, I'm going to also, I'm going to read for no more than 10 minutes, yes. right? And what that does is it gives us this target such that when we hit that point, then we can celebrate the win. We don't end up like reading for two hours one day and then not doing it again yeah. for a week. Every day we're hitting our mark. And as we do it, that mark might start to expand. Yeah, I love that. And in, in terms of healing, the other reason that that is so important um, is when you're returning to activity and you may have a really, really good day. And if you don't set, if you don't set that upper limit, you might push way too hard. And then the next week you've totally crashed, right? So those are boundaries. I'm going to, I'm going to go for a walk for 10 minutes, or I'm just going to walk to my mailbox and back. Um, and really just letting that be enough. Um, and then honoring that boundary that you've set for yourself. And then over time, that boundary can, you know, get bigger. And that's, that's, that's also part of healing. Um, so that's really more of those like internal boundaries. It's also, obviously, we all know this, really important to set boundaries with the people in our circles, the people in our lives, uh, with our work and all those types of things. And so something that was really, really important for me when I when I was sick, I spent a lot of time alone because I, I couldn't I couldn't go out with my friends. I couldn't leave the house. And so it actually really afforded me um, this. I, I will. I know it's it's hard when you're in it to recognize. But when I'm looking back at it, it was really a blessing for me because it afforded me the time to be able to. Um, reflect on my relationships and take inventory, right? What relationships are serving me? What relationships are helping me heal? And maybe what relationships are hindering me? Um, and so before we can potentially set a boundary with our relationship with someone or with our work, we want to take that inventory. We want to say, you know, is this person or, or is this activity, this thought, this behavior, any of those things, is it supporting my healing? Yes. Um, and being honest with ourselves and uh, obviously always having compassion for ourselves, whatever that answer might be. But when we have that awareness, when we identify what that relationship looks like, then we set the boundary and maybe again, we start really small. It's not about, okay, I've identified this person isn't supporting my healing, so I'm gonna cut them off completely, right? We don't, just, we don't have to start there, but we might start a little bit smaller uh, or much smaller. And then again, you can set a small boundary, honor that boundary. And then if you feel like you need to set a bigger boundary, you've got a little bit more confidence to do so. But also that small boundary might be enough. Yeah. Um, and that then that relationship might be supporting your healing a little bit better. So um, in terms of more of those external things, just really being honest with ourselves and taking that inventory is what's gonna allow us to then set, again, those really small goals. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I had to really take inventory when I was recovering as well. And you know, because I'm a very curious person, as so many of us are, if you're watching this video, you found your way to this channel, you're probably curiously <laughs> researching things. Yes. And so I was always researching more stuff and trying to find more answers. And at a certain mm. point, that can start to turn on us a little mm -hmm. bit because we can get inundated with information. We can, it actually can activate the limbic system, which makes us feel like we always have to, we're never quite ready to yeah. act, right? We're always having to look for the next thing. Is this really the right thing? It yeah. causes us to sometimes second guess ourselves. So I actually had to set a boundary yeah. for myself with doing research and say, okay, you know what? For at least a period of time, 60 days or whatever it might be, I'm just going to trust that the things that I have learned mm. are enough, that I have enough tools and resources oh, within me to make progress. Not saying I'm never gonna do it again because I enjoy learning new things, but for now, I could see that it got to a point where it was no longer supporting me. Mm. It was actually making me kind of nervous. And so I decided to put it aside for a time. And lastly, I think an important thing to note is that when it comes to boundary setting, it's a skill, It is right? It's, it's a not practice. a light switch that we turn on it's and a off. Practice. It's something that we practice. It's a skill that we can develop. And that's really good news because like any skill, we can get better at it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we would love to hear about your relationship with boundaries. You know, how, are there practices that you've put in place? Um, are there things that have been really, really helpful for you in your boundary setting and healing journey. So feel free, you guys. We'd love to hear from you. Comment below and uh, we'll see you next time.